Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Dana Coverstone has had another dream. In my opinion, there is absolutely positively no question his dreams are of the Lord. So we're going to dig into this one. Before I start this broadcast, I've got to explain to you that there are some things that I cannot say. So there are some people in political positions, one of whom has the initials, one of whom has the initials KH, the other one is HC. And I'm going to have to refer to them by their initials. You'll have to figure out who they are yourself. I'm going to quickly read through this first dream, and then we'll probably spend the rest of the broadcast going through it because this one is deep and it's complicated. And frankly, unless you understood a lot of things that God has given to the Prophecy Club, you probably won't understand this one. Most people will not get this one. August 17th, 2020. I call it the obvious winner is not so obvious. Dana says, I dreamt that I saw the calendar month of November. It was bent, torn, and dirty. I saw trees in the background were leafless, but there were very few trees that still had a scarce amount of leaves on them. These leaves had turned as if rain was coming. The sky was dull gray with extreme cloud cover. I saw the finger appear and circled November 3rd continuously in a clockwise direction, then changed to a counterclockwise direction before these images appeared. There were cities on fire, headlines everywhere, and read, Trump's victory challenged. These were on digital marquees in Times Square and other big cities. There were protesters in the streets who were weary and asleep. They appeared dirty and dingy as they had not had slept or showered in weeks. Suddenly this bell rang loud and clear and the protesters awoke and started salivating like a dog. Big buckets of saliva that seemed to stain their shirts. I saw people screaming and getting violent over the election results to the point of firing weapons randomly in all directions. I saw a person with a sign which read, The obvious winner is not so obvious, unquote. And he held his head in shame. But the crowd was in a frenzy of hatred and were even hitting each other in their wrath. I saw more cities with pillars of smoke over them, like the wildfires in California. I saw crumpled and burned out buildings in Washington, D.C., not monuments, but businesses and commercial real estate. Headlines declared that, quote, rebuilding would take time and trust would take even longer. And, quote, government could not do it in a timely fashion. Then I saw a Treasury official wink in a sarcastic manner, almost as if he were looking into a camera live on TV with a big smile, open mouth, and wink real big with his right eye and held it closed. Then I saw a Conestoga wagon, with K.H. driving it, led by two mules, and J.B. was riding the one on the left. On her side, there was a mechanical box that would trigger the dynamite. The push handle was in the upright position. The wind blew the covering back to reveal several cases of older-style dynamite, and some just loose in the upright position. The wind blew the covering back to reveal several cases of older-style dynamite, and some just loose in an open wicker basket. K.H. began whipping the mules and hitting J.B. as well with the whip. J.B. had no idea who was being whipped. He was not aware of what was happening. The mules started moving and picking up speed, and they were heading toward a target car. I saw H.C. standing behind President Trump, who was on his knees. She was wearing what resembled like a Wilma Flintstone dress that was ugly and unfinished with patches. She had a gaudy ring on her index finger that looked like it had blood on it. There was a skeleton key hanging from around her neck, dangling in front of President Trump's eyes, and it had blood and black mold all over it. It had stained the front of her dress with a stain that looked like the lightning symbol from the SS Nazi, black and red. She held a Roman gladius knife to the left side of Trump's neck. The wagon started picking up speed. Harris pushed the plunger on the trigger and jumped off the wagon as it headed towards Clinton and Trump. H.C. face was giddy. I saw that there was a large animal trap close to her leg. Trump grabbed the key hanging from around H.C. neck and pulled down, then struck H.C. in the face with his fist as it came down. She dropped the knife and stepped into the trap, and the president ran off quickly. I heard three gunshots and watched three Secret Service agents in suits jump up in front of all three bullets and shielded the president as he jumped into his car, the beast, and was taken away to safety. 
the Secret Service agents without sunglasses surrounded the car with muskets as they moved slowly away. H.C. tried to pull her leg out of the trap, but could not, and the wagon struck her. There was a huge explosion which damaged buildings and left a big hole. It threw the carcasses of the mules up on top of the building rubble, where the smoke was coming off of them as if they had been grilled. J.B. was lying face down in the middle of the street with wheel tracks over him and a vulture sitting on his head. K.H. was crying in disbelief, and her tears looked like they were the size of quarters. They looked like quarters. I saw the church. There was a separation line with no middle ground left, as sides had to be taken. There was fire on the altars of the church around the nation. Fire moved upon the heads of people who had been praying and above the heads of many people in the church. I saw an actual question mark symbol above their heads. They appeared very confused by what they were seeing in the world and in the church. Then I heard a voice say, quote, Those who refuse to get ready will be wanting in the end, so brace yourself and tell others that I have warned them to brace themselves, for they are about to see even more shocking things. Now, obviously, that's very detailed, but I think you and I will understand it. As at least I, and probably you do too, pray for discernment every day and ask that God will show us the deep and secret things. Matter of fact, this is part of what I pray. Lord, give Leslie and I knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, understanding all visions and dreams, showing of hard sentences, dissolving of doubt. Give us an excellent spirit. Help us to conduct ourselves wisely. In Jesus' name. Now I'll read it again, and let's see if we can understand this. Lord, help us to understand the deep and secret things. In Jesus' name. I dreamt that I saw the calendar month of November, as in that's talking about this November in what, some 60 days away. It was bent and torn and dirty, meaning that by November, America's already going to be in a lot of trouble. I saw trees in the background, which were leafless. But there were very few trees that still had a scarce amount of leaves on them. I think this is talking about in terms of the time of the year, but I also think it's saying nuclear explosions have, have happened at this point. Now, I'm going to say I do not think it's Dimitri's message. I do not think it's the Russians attacking yet, but we will know for certain when we start seeing those headlines. Remember, Omar ushers in Palestinian state, catastrophe hits America, Israel refuses to help to America, all of those. But if those start taking place, then we will know the Russian invasion is coming very soon. But I'm going to say I think that this is the suitcase nukes, but that comes in the next dream, which I'm pretty sure we will not have time to get to today. This one is long and detailed. These leaves had turned as if rain was coming, and I think it's saying there as if trouble was coming. The sky was dull gray with extreme cloud cover. I saw the finger appear and circle November 3rd continuously in a clockwise direction. Suddenly, it changed to counterclockwise before these images appeared. I believe that that is saying that right now everything is going in the way of the devil. It's turning clockwise. But I believe it is saying that with prayer, let me say it again, with prayer, specifically if we can get enough people that are willing to gather fast and pray and assemble, assemble, if we can get enough people, if we can make changes in the heavenlies, then God is going to turn this around. In other words, right now, for, I don't know what, 30, 40, 50 years, it's been going the way of the devil in this nation. But I believe it's saying that it's going to change. It's not going to be easy, but it can be done. There were cities on fire and headlines everywhere that read, Trump's victory challenged. I'll read that again. Trump's victory challenged. Did you hear just yesterday that Hillary is now saying that Biden should not concede if he's beaten? Well, I think that's very interesting because four years ago, Hillary was saying, well, Trump is colluding with the Russians to steal the election. And in fact, it was actually Hillary colluding with the Russians trying to steal the election. And four years ago, Hillary was saying, even if Trump loses, he's still not going to concede the election. Now, Hillary is saying, even if Biden loses, he is not going to concede the election. So this all fits in. 
And I think it's the interesting part of this is that whatever the Democrats say and accuse the Republicans of doing, that is what they are doing. Let me back up and read that sentence again. There were cities on fire and headlines everywhere that read, Trump's victory challenged. These were on digital marquees in Times Square and other big cities. Now, I think that this is the start of the internal revolution. Remember I told you that Dimitri Dudeman thought that it would be something like they cut off welfare. In other words, there's something so big that it makes so many people angry that it starts the internal revolution. Well, now I think it is the second election of Donald Trump. Trump's victory challenged. These were on digital marquees in the Times Square and other big cities. There were protesters in the streets who were weary and asleep. They appeared dirty and dingy as if they had not slept or showered in weeks. In other words, these are people that were just furious and doing everything they could to stop Trump from winning. Yet, he still won. Suddenly, this bell rang loud and clear, and the protesters awoke and started salivating like a dog. Big buckets of saliva that seemed to stain their shirts. I believe that this is the awakening of the devils. That loud ring out there that's loud and clear. I'm not going to put that off the table. That that could be the opening of the first seal. That could be the start of the tribulation. I don't think so, but just be aware of that. Just be watching for it. So what is the big bell that rings? I think it is the devils waking up and they are getting furious because they are losing. You have to understand, the primary purpose of Donald Trump is to get the Khazarian Mafia arrested. These people that worship Moloch and Baal and do child sacrifice and sex trafficking and filth, and unfortunately they have the money of the world too, or had it. It's in the process of being removed, according to finalwakeupcall.info. Anyway, let's go on. I saw people screaming and getting violent over the election results to the point of firing weapons randomly in all directions. I saw a person with a sign that read, quote, The obvious winner is not so obvious. And he held his head in shame. But the crowd was in a frenzy of hatred and were even hitting each other in their wrath. I saw more big cities with pillars of smoke over them like the wild firestorms in California. I saw crumpled and burned out buildings in Washington, D.C. Not monuments, but businesses and commercial real estate. Then I saw headlines that declared, quote, rebuilding would take time and trust would take even longer. And, quote, government could not do it in a timely fashion. Now, let's take a second. What does that, what's that saying? It's saying that I think that we can come out of this victorious if we pray and we fast and we assemble. But it's also saying it's not going away soon. These problems, it's here to stay, and it's here to stay for a long time, and we best just set our jaw. We better get prepared. We better make sure we have a water filter. We better make certain we have food, and I don't mean for 30 days. I mean, we better make certain we have food and water. So if we, don't, if we can't go to work, if we can't leave our house for safety, for all of the firestorms, I'm not talking about California, I'm talking about burning our cities, if we can't leave our home for fear of not being safe, do we have water and food? We have the things to survive. If not, I'm telling you, not just one person, but many people saying it's a coming and it's not going away anytime soon. That's the reason I think in one of the earlier dreams that Coverson was given was basically that people are going to start waking up and they're going to see that, well, if there is a pre-trib rapture, it should have already happened. Okay, so let's read that last sentence again. Headlines declared, rebuilding would take time and trust would take even longer. And, quote, government could not do it in a timely fashion. It's saying, this trouble, it can pass. So I don't think that this is the Russian attack. But it's not going to be easy. And we are looking at a lot of trouble headed our way. And it's coming in, well, September, October, and for sure by November. Then I saw a Treasury, now there's a little bit of good news here. Then I saw a Treasury official wink in a sarcastic manner, almost as if he were looking straight into the camera on live TV, with a big smile, an open mouth, and wink with the right eye and held it closed. A Treasury official winking with a smile. 
I think that this is talking about them kicking out the Khazarian Mafia, the international bankers, those Moloch and Baal worshippers that are for abortion and for killing the unborn, and they're for child sacrifice and sex trafficking. Unfortunately, they also have controlled the world's finances for 300 years. This is confirming that they are in the process of being kicked out. That's the 182,771 sealed indictments being served. Just like FinalWakeUpCall.info says that there is a new financial system coming into place, which will be gold and silver and asset-backed. Well, that's the Treasury official saying there is some good news. Yes, there's going to be a lot of trouble financially, but apparently he's saying that this new system is also going to be bringing some good news. Now let's go on. Then I saw Conestoga wagon. This is kind of like what our ancestors uh, moved from the east across the west out to California in these open wagons, okay? Like the wagon train and stuff like that. Then I saw a Conestoga wagon with KH driving it, led by two mules. Okay, why mules? Well, the elephant is the sign of the Republicans, but the mule is the sign of the Democrats. So what it's saying is KH is really the one in the driver's seat. She is the one that is controlling the Democratic Party. Surprise, surprise. JB was riding on one of the far left mules, meaning he's not in charge. She has the reins. She's in charge. And at her side, there was a mechanical box that would trigger the dynamite meaning that they have a plan to destroy this nation. But their plan to destroy this nation is going to backfire and destroy them. Many of the evil are going to be destroyed in the days ahead. I really believe that's what it's saying. The push handle was in the upright position. So at this point, her plan, and this plan has probably been in place for a long time, truth be known. Her plan is to destroy this nation and... Unfortunately for her, it turns around and destroys the Democratic Party and many of the people. Let's go on. So the push handle was in the upright position. The wind blew the covering back to reveal several cases of older style dynamite and some just loose in an open wicker basket. K.H. began whipping the mules and hitting J.B. as well with the whip. K.H. is the one. She's really the one in charge of the Democratic Party. And she is telling J.B. what to do and basically the rest of the Democratic Party. She's the one really in charge. And she's the one trying to blow this whole thing up. She's the one trying to bring down this nation. I mean, even the Democrats say she is the most far left of any Democrat that has ever been elected to the Senate. The mules started moving and picking up speed. So their plan goes along for a while. They were heading toward a target car, or they were heading toward their objective. And their objective is not to get the presidency as much as it is to destroy the Christian nation so that they can have their man, the Antichrist, set on the throne. Knowing or unknowingly, that's the real objective. I saw H.C. standing behind President Trump, who was on his knees. She was wearing what resembled to be a Wilma Flintstone dress that was ugly and unfinished with patches. She had a gaudy ring on her index finger, meaning that she counts wealth, gold, diamonds, very important, but she gets that through killing others. Now, that's now I'm not saying she killed anybody. Uh, matter of fact, let me give a disclaimer. I do not know that any of this is speaking about anybody in America, uh, but I'm just telling you the very best interpretation I can bring to it. Okay, so anyway, it says he has blood on him. There was a skeleton key hanging around her neck, meaning that she's in charge. She's probably more in charge than K.H. There was a skeleton key hanging around her neck, dangling in front of President Trump's eyes, and it had blood and black mold all over it. Filth. Yes, she's in charge, but she rules by the spilling of blood and by filth. Well, that is what the devil does. He comes not but for to kill, steal, and destroy It had stained the front of her dress with a stain that looked like the lightning symbol from the Nazi SS. It means Schussenstaffel, which was a major paramilitary organization under Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party in the Nazi Germany and throughout 
German-occupied Europe during World War II, it began with a small guard unit known as a Saul Schultz, if I'm saying that right. It literally means protection squadron. She held a Roman gladius knife to the left side of his neck. Again, the interpretation is that H.C. is in charge of this thing. She has the skeleton key. She has the key. She has the reins. And she's got that power through blood and just filth and corruption. And she held a Roman gladius knife to the left side of Trump's neck. The wagon started picking up speed. K.H. pushed the plunger on the trigger and jumped off the wagon as it headed towards H.C. and Trump. H.C. face was giddy. I saw that there was a large animal trap close to her leg, meaning it'll appear that Trump is on his knees. It'll appear that H.C. is in charge and just about to take out Trump. But Trump has a plan. God has a plan. And all of this is a trap, a trap that she's going to get caught in, and it's going to be the end of H.C. and K.H. and the Democrat Party. Again, I'm not saying anything bad about the Democrat Party. And I cannot guarantee that this interpretation is actually accurate. Trump grabbed the key hanging in front of him and pulled it down, then struck H.C. face with his fist as it came down. She dropped the knife and stepped into the trap and the president ran off quickly, meaning this is all a big trap. K.H. H.C. are going to get caught in the trap and President Trump is going to escape. Then I heard three handgun shots and watched three Secret Service agents in suits jump up in front of all three bullets to shield the president as he got in his car, the beast, and was taken away to safety. Meaning that there will be three attempts on his life doesn't necessarily mean that we will hear about a one of them. Somebody once said that he's already had over 12 attempts on his life. I don't know that that is true. Here's all sorts of things through the Internet. The interpretation is that there will be at least three more attempts on his life, but they will not be successful and Trump is taken away to safety. Then the Secret Service agents, without sunglasses, surrounded the car with muskets as they moved slowly away, meaning many of the good people that have been kind of in hiding come forth and they begin to stand up for the president, and they begin to defend him. And they defend him with, I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but a musket is not very accurate, but it <laughs> packs a very big punch. I believe it's saying that, yes, there's going to be people that are going to step up and defend the president when they see he has actually become victorious over this thing. H.C. tried to pull her leg away out of the trap, but could not do it, and the wagon struck her. This whole plan by K.H. and by H.C. is actually going to blow up in their face, and they're going to get caught in a trap, and it's saying, this is the interpretation of the dream, that Trump will come away victorious but it's going to be a bloody battle. H.C. tried to pull her leg away, but could not, and the wagon struck her. There was a huge explosion which damaged buildings and left a big hole. It threw the carcasses of the mules up on top of the building where the rubble and the smoke was coming off. It, they looked as if they had been grilled, meaning that all of the evil that these people have done is going to be finally exposed, and it's going to be like they have been grilled that they... They, they, real bad things happen to him. I'll say it that way. JB was laying face down in the middle of the street with wheel tracks all over him. In other words, he's taken out too, and a vulture sitting on his head. So it's saying that, at least politically, he's out of the picture. KH was crying in disbelief, and her tears looked like they were size of quarters. And he goes on to say actual quarters. And I believe that's saying that she's not only crying because she didn't get the presidency, that her plans to destroy the nation didn't happen, everything fell apart, and yes, she has big tears, but also it's saying that she lost some kind of money. So apparently there's money involved in this, and she didn't get it. Now we come to the final part. I saw the church. There was a separation line with no middle ground left as sides had to be taken. There was fire on the altars in the churches around the nation. There was a separation line with no middle ground left, as sides had to be taken. And I would that thou wert cold or hot, so that because thou art neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. He wants us to either be on fire for Jesus or cold. But if we are lukewarm, if we are in the middle, he's going to spit us out of his mouth. What it's saying is, 
the church has to finally choose sides. Either we're going to go for the devil, the mark of the beast, and we're going to be cold, or we're going to be hot on fire for Jesus, but he is not going to put up with any more of this lukewarm, oh yeah, well, uh, I'm a Christian, and sometimes I go to church, and mm -hmm, and, and, it, and I read my Bible once in a while, and I, I, I pray sometimes, you know, no more of this lukewarm Christianity. That's what it's saying. And that's the whole point of this, is to make people choose. Either you take the mark, or you worship Jesus, one or the other, no more standing on the middle ground. There was a separation line with no middle ground left as sides had to be taken. There was fire on the altars and churches around the nation, meaning the Holy Ghost fire finally hit. Finally hit the churches, just like Shane Warren and many others have prophesied. Fire moved on the head. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is talking about you. Fire moved on the heads of people who had been praying and above the heads of many people in the church. I believe that that is specifically talking to people like those that listen to the Prophecy Club, your prophecy students, not just Prophecy Club, but I think it's also specifically talking to those people that come to the Solemn September Assembly. They are praying, look, you come and you fast and you pray for 48 hours. Don't you know that counts big in the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters? It's probably going to be one of the most important moments in our lives. How many times have you heard me say, I, t I was told, that God said that I need to build an end-time army of prophecy teachers working miracles. Here it is. Here it is. This is the time that we've been getting prepared for. All of this preparation, all of this studies, it's come down to this. Let me back up and read that again. There was a separation line with two, no middle ground left as sides had to be taken. There was fire on the altars and churches around the nation, as in miracles and healings and things like that. Fire moved on the heads of people who had been praying and above the heads of many people in the church. I saw an actual question mark symbol above their heads. They appeared very confused. These are the people, the lukewarm, okay? They appeared very confused by what they were seeing in the world and in the church. You've heard me say that one of these days they're going to wake up and they're going to find themselves in the tribulation and they're going to be like scared little rabbits, ill-prepared, uninformed, and they're going to be looking for some answers. And that's where we step in. You have been getting prepared. I've been telling you, I've been telling you, I've been telling you. And here it is, brothers and sisters. Now let's go on. They appeared very confused by what they were seeing in the world and in the church. I heard a voice say, quote, those who refuse to get ready will be wanting in the end. What's that saying? Same thing we've been saying. If they don't get ready, if they don't wake up, they don't get their eyes open, they don't start learning about Bible prophecy, what time it is, and that time is running out, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to be wanting in the end. Those who refuse to get ready will be wanting in the end. So brace yourself and tell others that I have warned them to brace themselves, for they are about to see even more shocking things. The least favorite thing for Christians is a prayer meeting. Many people have been warned America is about to go into a storm capable of destroying our nation. This time, it's not enough to fast and pray separately. This time, we must assemble and pray. We're calling God's people to fast, pray, humble themselves, and seek God's face, asking God to forgive America's sin and heal our land. For once, American Christians must put aside our divisions and unite under Jesus' name for 48 hours, fast, pray, for only one thing, our nation. Can American Christians put aside our divisions for 48 hours, fast and pray? Go to watchmanstrumpet.com, but don't look for any denominations or famous names. They're not there. Spots are limited. Reserve your place. Look unto God. Come fast and pray together for 48 continuous hours. Then watch God begin to heal our land or watch the devil tear it apart. Our choice, watchmanstrumpet.com watchmanstrumpet.com